For many fleets, fuel is the largest cost that you have to battle each year, and while you can't control the market price of fuel, you can find opportunities to reduce your fuel costs simply by keeping a log of all your fuel expenses. If you haven't kept track of your fuel costs in the past, or you're looking for a way to digitally track all of your existing records, we've created a free spreadsheet template to help you start organizing your data. You can find the link to download that template in the video description below. Today, I wanna to walk through how to get started with this template and then some steps that you can take to customize it for your fleet. And I wanna remind you that we have a whole library of free tools just like this one that we've created to help you get better insights into your fleet. And you can also find that link in the video description below. All right, let's get started. When you open up our fuel log template, you'll notice that it's currently set to view only. To start customizing it for your fleet, you'll need to go to file and select make a copy. Give it a name unique to your fleet. You can even include the year you're logging or a specific fuel type such as diesel to further organize your information. Before we start entering data, I wanna show you how we've structured this template. There are two sheets, your fuel log and a vehicle report. The fuel log is exactly what you'd expect, containing an individual line item for every fuel transaction in your fleet. The other sheet is a vehicle report. In this sheet, we take all of your fuel entries and allow you to filter that data by vehicle. All you have to do is select from this dropdown right here, and the rest of the sheet will auto-populate with information around that vehicle. I'll go into more details on this sheet later in the video because it's the one that really gets me excited about spreadsheets, but for now, I'd like to walk you through the fuel log. When you open this up, you'll see that we've pre-populated this sheet with some fuel entries to show you how the sheet works. To delete this data and start entering your own information, highlight the entire row by clicking the number on the left. You can hold shift to select multiple rows, then right click and select delete rows. You'll get this pop-up warning you that you're deleting important information. You can select OK to confirm, but I'm gonna start with the data already in there to save some time. So we'll undo those changes and start from there. The biggest benefit to using a spreadsheet rather than paper in a binder is being able to see what the costs and averages look like across your fleet. We've added this section to the top to give you an immediate overview of your total fuel spend and some of your average costs in the fleet. And before you start adding your own fuel entries, we've added some quick drop downs that allow you to customize some fields based on your units of measurement. These fields are your vehicle identifier, where you can swap between a VIN or a vehicle ID, depending on how you distinguish between vehicles in your fleet. The volume type, where you can choose between gallons or liters. And on the vehicle report, you can select your distance type where you choose between miles or kilometers. With each change, you'll notice your measurements in the totals and averages section update automatically. Now let's walk through the process of adding a new fuel log entry. We'll use one of our existing vehicles, VEH02, to see how it builds upon itself. You'll add the vehicle ID in this first column on the left, our last odometer reading for this vehicle was 24,001, so we'll add a couple hundred miles between trips. We'll say that James was still operating this vehicle and filled up on January 13th in the morning. He spent 58 and some change on 17 and a half gallons. And you'll already notice that with all of that information, column I automatically updated to reflect his cost per gallon and it's shaded red. To get the most out of this spreadsheet, make sure that you never edit column I manually. It'll break the formulas that we've built and just make things a little bit more difficult for you. If you hover over the cells with a black tab in the top right, it'll reveal a comment that explains something about that column. For this one, it explains the rules for cell shading. You can see that shaded cells are outliers in our data and represent a number that's 10% above and below our fleet averages. Since a higher cost per gallon is bad, we'll assume that a cell shaded red is not a good number. And comparing this 336 to our fleet average of 304, we can see that our cost per gallon is well above average on this entry. This is information that you can leverage to identify things like fuel theft, miss entries, or maybe it's one of those high class gas stations on the expensive side of town. Either way, you can use this to help identify cost savings opportunities within your fleet. Next, let's say that he filled the vehicle all the way up. This column is important for the spreadsheet because it helps us accurately calculate the cost per mile for your vehicle. We use this information to determine the fuel tank capacity of a vehicle in your fleet. These next few fields are self-explanatory, and then we also added some fields if you wanna track the expenses on individual fuel cards. And lastly, we have a field for comments so you can leave notes on the individual purchase. 
We've left a couple to show examples. I'll come back to tell you how we came to these conclusions and why we left these comments. Really, once you get to column K, this information is purely for you and your fleet. If you don't need to track something that we've included, delete that column or change it to something that you would like to log. Now that we've added a new fuel entry, let's go over to the vehicle report sheet and see how you can get a cleaner look at this data. I'm getting excited just thinking about it. As I said earlier, this sheet is meant to be a report for individual vehicles in your fleet. The only cell that you need to edit is the drop down box in D2. Everything else updates automatically and if you edit anything outside of this drop down box, you could end up breaking the formulas in the rest of the sheet, so exercise caution. Again, we've included some key information at the top of this sheet, but this time we've added a column specific to this vehicle so you can see how its averages compare to the rest of your fleet. We can see immediately that VEH01 is performing better than our fleet averages, while VEH02 is performing worse. This data becomes more and more valuable as you add more vehicles to the fuel log. Further down the page, you'll start to see the individual entries for this vehicle sorted by odometer reading. Obviously, we need a starting and ending mileage point before we can determine things like cost per mile and miles per gallon, so the first row indicates the start of your vehicle data. But once you get into your second and third rows, you can start to surface those vehicle-specific calculations. And similar to the shaded fields on the fuel log sheet, these cells will automatically shade red or green to indicate outliers. If you hover over the header cell, it'll show what kind of variation we're looking for. A quick hover tells me that on our vehicle-specific calculations, we're looking at numbers that are 10% above or below our fleet averages. As I said before, this information is where you'll be able to find cost savings or unnecessary expenses to your fleet. For example, under VEH01, we can see that gas at the Chevron and Trustful is expensive. Maybe avoid that gas station if it continues to be a trend. And under VEH02, we can see that gas at the Shell in Birmingham was great. Let's keep that in mind for the future. We can also see on VEH02 that our cost per gallon was very high on January 8th, and on our next reading, the miles per gallon was much lower. Did the gas prices go up, or do we have an inaccurate reading? This could be an early sign of fuel theft, and by having a log, you know where to start looking just in case. If we have telematics or GPS tracking in the vehicle, we could look into James's driving habits that day to see if he was idling for long periods of time or accelerating aggressively. It could be a completely innocent situation, but having a log of your fuel purchases allows you to better identify specific circumstances worth investigating. So as I said, we would come back to the comments that we left on the fuel log sheet. So let's go do that. You can see over here that for those purchases where we noticed outliers, I left comments based on what I thought could be happening within those purchases. And this gives you an opportunity to follow back on it later or to make sure that you're keeping up with variables across your fleet. And that's how you can take your fuel data and turn it into actionable decisions that allow you to find cost savings within your fleet. If you want to print out a quick report for each vehicle, you can easily do that by highlighting the data that you want to include and going to File, Print, and then choose Selected Cells. You can uncheck Show Notes if you don't need those included in your report, and then select Print when you're ready and distribute this to the team. You can go through the same steps to export a PDF, but instead of selecting Print, go to File, Download, PDF. And I know what you're probably wondering, which is what do we do if we need to add a new vehicle to this sheet? And I got you, don't worry. It's literally as easy as going to your fuel log and typing in the new vehicle ID. We'll call ours VEH03, which hopefully you'll see a pattern in my naming system. And then you'll fill out the rest of the fuel log. And then if you go to the vehicle report page, you'll see that it's automatically added to this dropdown box. As mentioned before, the more fuel logs you add for each vehicle, the more accurate these numbers become and the more insights that you can take from this information. And that's how to use our fuel log spreadsheet. As I said in the beginning of this video, a spreadsheet is a great way to start organizing your fuel data, but this can still be a time consuming process having to manually enter in each individual purchase. If you want to take your fuel data to the next level, start tracking this information in a fleet management software. Fleetio software allows you to immediately record and organize fuel purchases through a mobile app that drivers can fill out while they're still at the pump. And if you use fuel cards to handle purchases, it can even automatically integrate with your fuel card software so nobody ever has to manually enter anything again. And isn't that really the dream? 
For those of you wondering which fuel card is right for your fleet, I've also included a link to our blog on that topic in the description below. If you'd like to see if Fleetio's fuel management system is the right fit for your fleet, start a free trial or schedule a walkthrough demo with our team today. And as always, subscribe to our channel to stay informed on future free tools and fleet management tips.